Over the last few years, we have helped thousands of drone pilots pass the aeronautical knowledge test to get an FAA Part 107 remote pilot certificate. And in that time, we've learned a lot about which topics students struggle with the most. So in this video, we wanted to dive into the five most challenging Part 107 exam questions in 2024 and break them down step by step. The first question is, refer to figure 20, area one. You're hired to inspect a group of structures that are under construction nine statute miles south of Norfolk International Airport. What's the highest you're allowed to fly without needing to ask for additional FAA permission? For these questions, students need to understand how to ensure accurate distance measurement using the chart scale, identify obstructions and towers under construction, how to measure the distance from the airport symbol and not the airport name, and understand the operating limitations of Part 107.51. While the Part 107 regulations state a maximum altitude of 400 feet AGL, you're allowed to fly higher than that as long as you're within 400 feet of a tower or obstruction. You're even allowed to fly up to 400 feet above the topmost part of the tower. In this case, the height of the high intensity lighted group of structures under construction nine statute miles south of Norfolk International Airport is 453 feet AGL. If you're flying as high as allowed under the Part 107, you'd be flying 453 feet above ground level plus 400 feet which equals 853 feet above ground level. The next question is, refer to figure 80. What minimum elevation should a manned aircraft pilot fly to clear all obstacles in the quadrant surrounding Montrose Regional? For this question, you need to know how to identify a quadrangle and which quadrangle the airport is actually located in, and understand that the maximum elevation figure, or MEF, includes both terrain and man-made obstructions. Most students miss this question because they are looking at the terrain elevation in the area around the airport instead of the MEF. So after locating Montrose Regional Airport, you need to look around it to identify the quadrant that it's in. The airport info text spans two quadrants, but the airport icon is in the top right quadrant. Then look for the MEF in that quadrant. It's a big number 11 and a little number seven. The large number represents thousands of feet, mean sea level, or MSL. The small number represents hundreds of feet MSL. So that's where we are getting 11,700 feet MSL. Remember that the MEF is the minimum altitude that you can fly in a given quadrangle and still be able to clear all obstacles in that quadrangle, including terrain and obstructions. The maximum elevation is rounded up and then another 100 feet is added. The third question is, refer to figure 21. What type of military flight operations should a pilot expect along IR-644 in the Devil's Lake West MOA? A military training route, or MTR, is used by the military for conducting low altitude, high speed flight training at speeds in excess of 250 knots. Typically, the routes above 1500 feet AGL are flown under instrument flight rules, or IFR, and the routes flown under 1500 feet AGL are flown under visual flight rules or VFR. On a sectional chart, MTRs are identified by the gray line with multiple route segments. It goes IFR or IR and VFR or VR followed by a number. All of this information is displayed on a straight line with an arrow. MTRs with four numbers denote routes flown at 1500 feet AGL and below. At such a low altitude, this can present challenges to an unmanned aircraft. MTRs with three numbers denote routes flown with at least one segment above 1500 feet AGL. This finalizes the answer to be IFR training flights above 1500 feet AGL at speeds in excess of 250 knots. The fourth question is, refer to figure 26, area five. The airspace overlying and surrounding a five mile radius from Barnes County Airport is, for this question, Barnes County Airport sits within a thick magenta vignette or circle, which indicates class E airspace starting at 700 feet AGL. Up until 700 feet AGL, it's class G uncontrolled airspace. Technically, if you were operating an SUAS close to the airport, 
you wouldn't need additional permission or authorization as long as you are flying under 700 feet AGL. The answer is Class G airspace from the surface to 700 feet AGL. The fifth question is, refer to figure 26. Which airport is located at approximately 46.93 degrees north latitude and 98.02 degrees west longitude? For this question, it's important to note that sectional charts only have degrees and minutes, so students have to understand how to convert decimal degrees to degrees and minutes. To convert the decimal portion of each coordinate, you simply multiply the decimal number by 60 to determine the minutes, since there are 60 minutes in one degree. For latitude 46.93 degrees, multiply 0.93 times 60 minutes to get 55.8, which rounds up to 56 minutes, and you end up with 46 degrees, 56 minutes. For longitude 98.02 degrees, take 0.02 and multiply it by 60 minutes to get 1.2, which rounds down to one minute, and you end up with 98 degrees, one minute. So again, 46.93 degrees north latitude becomes 46 degrees, 56 minutes latitude, and 98.02 degrees west longitude becomes 98 degrees, one minute longitude. There are a few additional things to remember about latitude and longitude on a sectional chart. One degree can be divided into 60 minutes. As you move west or left away from the prime meridian, the longitudinal degree numbers go up. As you move north away from the equator, the latitudinal degree numbers go up. The opposite is true if you're moving toward the prime meridian or equator. And each line of latitude or line of longitude is 30 minutes or half a degree from the next one. This can be confusing to many students. So if you're looking at a line of longitude that's 98 degrees and you move left, the numbers are going up since you're moving away from the prime meridian. Each notch to the left is one minute. Therefore, the line to the left or west of 98 degrees is 98 degrees and 30 minutes. The question is a little trickier because instead of degrees and minutes, we're getting degrees and decimals. So you have to know how to translate 46.93 degrees north and 98.0 degrees west back into degrees and minutes. With this logic, you should be able to figure out that 46.93 degrees north latitude and 98.02 degrees west longitude indicate Barnes County Airport. Again, a lot of students struggle with this, so you're not alone. And here is one last bonus concept that seems to trip students up a lot. It's how to tell the difference between class G and class E airspace. The simpler version is it's all about the altitude. An easy way to remember this is if you're not within the inner ring of class B or C, or within class D or surface area E, class G starts at the surface and extends up to the starting altitude of class E. Class E that starts at 700 feet AGL is indicated by the thick fuzzy magenta line or circle, but class E that starts at 1200 feet AGL is not indicated on sectional charts so you'll have to commit this to memory. If you are outside of controlled airspace that starts at the surface and you see a thick fuzzy magenta line or circle, this indicates class E starting at 700 feet AGL and from 699 feet AGL to the surface is class G airspace. If there is no class of airspace indicated, class E automatically starts at 1200 feet AGL and from 1199 feet AGL to the surface it is class G. You'll only see a difference in the altitudes for class G and E described above if you were in a mountainous area and the sectional chart showed a thick fuzzy blue line or shape. As shown on the figure, class G extends from the surface up to 14,500 feet MSL inside of the fuzzy blue line. And there you have it, our selection of the five most difficult part 107 exam questions. If you're cramming right now and watching this video right before your exam, Good luck and we hope you pass. If you're just beginning your journey of studying for the part 107 exam and want a guarantee that you'll pass on your first try, make sure to check out our online test prep course, Drone Pilot Ground School. Our course covers all 120 plus knowledge concepts across 70 plus video based lectures. We also give you access to 350 plus practice questions with an answer key as well as several other benefits. If any of this sounds interesting to you, go check out this link right here or in the description below. And if you want specific help with sectional chart questions, check out our video on the five trickiest sectional chart questions here. If you found this video helpful, 
make sure to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Until next time, blue skies and safe flying.